Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Education and health officials say this week, by Wednesday to be exact, they will have vital information relating to the spread of COVID-19 at the Castries Comprehensive School and what that will mean for the future of other education institutions on island. Minister for Education Dr. Gail Rigobert and Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George shed light on the fluid situation and Geneve Gonzag has all the details in this report. On Friday, it was announced that all education institutions on Ireland will be closed for an initial one-week period, while the Castries Comprehensive Secondary will remain closed for two weeks in the first instance. This was as a result of a student and member of staff at CCSS testing positive for COVID-19. On Monday, Minister for Education Dr. Gil Rigobert explained that no decision has been made for what will happen after the announced closure. This is because testing is still ongoing. Dr. Rigobert says the ministry is holding out hope that the situation is not any more severe than what has already been presented. By now, all teachers have been tested, many of the students too. You can appreciate it as a school that has over 600 students. And so there had to be a strategic approach to this, addressing those more closely affiliated with the students and extending the service. As, as we could. During an appearance on the segment on Hot 7 TV, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George indicated that by Wednesday, more results from tests at the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School should be available, and thereafter, a decision will be made as to the way forward for schools, whether they reopen or remain closed. By Wednesday, we'll get most of our results from our testing and we'll make a decision as to if we need to extend it or if we can open the rest of the schools, except for the main school, which is the Castries Comprehensive school that will keep closed for two weeks but by when they will be able to make a full assessment of the situation and make the necessary recommendations. Dr. Rigobert says given the fluidity of the COVID-19 situation the tests will afford education officials the opportunity to evaluate whether their plans protocols and preparations are sufficient. Each school is afforded one clear day to allow for sanitization, comprehensive sanitization, beyond that which obtains on a daily basis in schools. Further, with respect to our education continuity plan, and by that we mean what do we do should there be any disruption to school, that would have been tested during our lockdown earlier this year and now what we are experiencing provides yet another opportunity to stress test what it is that we have in place. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Geneve Bonza. Police Commissioner Severin Morsheri is standing firmly on the side of a police officer who last month was charged for the murder of a 22-year-old in August 2018. Morsheri says unless the forces of the law dictate otherwise and as long as he has a say, his officer remains on the force. Rochelle Gonzalez reports. The police officer who was charged with murder last month for the killing of a 22-year-old can breathe a small sigh of relief knowing that the commissioner of police is standing in his corner. Michael Vitalis shot and killed Ronnie Samuel in Groselay on the 1st of August 2018 after Samuel reportedly opened fire during a juve activity in the community, injuring two other men in the process. He was charged on Friday the 4th of September 2020 and was subsequently granted bail in the sum of $120,000. On Tuesday morning, Commissioner of Police Severin Morsheri was asked for an update in the case and was further asked about the status of the officer. The Commissioner put it simply with this response. At this time, Mr. Vitalis is on bail and he is on leave for now. Wanting to know more, the top cop was probed further with reporters asking him to expound on his response. And expound he did. I do not intend to suspend Mr. Vitalis. The legislation gives me the discretion whether I should um, suspend or not. And I will read this section of law to you. Section 32 of the Police Act states, an inspector, surveillance officer, or constable against whom any complaint or information 
for an offence punishable on summary conviction or an indictment is laid, or against whom a charge is made for breach of any disciplinary regulation made under this Act, may, pending and until final determination of such complaint, information or charge, A, be suspended from duty and placed on half pay by the Commissioner of Police, or if admitted to bail and not so suspended, be employed on full-time duty, in which case he or she shall receive full pay, or if employed on part-time duty, he or she shall receive a rate of pay not being less than half pay, as the Commissioner of Police fails pay. So we, in my, having, having looked at the circumstances and having dealt with this case on its merit, I do not find it necessary for me to have Mr. Vitali suspended. However, he will be placed on desk duty. For security purposes, police did not reveal the department under which the officer would be working. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. After a sudden spike of violent crime in the Lesdiland community leaves two dead and three injured all in the space of a week, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force is appealing to residents to help them in the fight to bring the criminals to justice and restore peace in the community. Police Commissioner Severin Morsheri says the residents know who is behind the crime and they are the key to putting an end to the violence. One week ago, the Leslie Land community in Castri suddenly became an all-out war zone and the violent gun crime, in a matter of days, claimed the lives of two young men. It also left three young men nursing gunshot injuries at the OKEU hospital. During a press conference with the executive of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force on Tuesday morning, the Commissioner of Police, Severin Marshery, and Deputy Commissioner of Police with responsibility for operations, Milton Daisy, addressed the current situation that has left residents living in fear as the war continues to brew, leaving no one safe. Commissioner Morsheri made an appeal to the residents of the community, stating that in order to win this fight, their help is needed. I must say it is the responsibility of police, the police to ensure the safety of every community and not just Leslie Land. What we also want is for members of the public to cooperate with the police in providing information that would lead to the arrest or the, to be able to, to detect some of those uh, crimes. In some instances, we are faced with difficulties when we go out there to do our investigation. So I call on members of the public. Again, they could call the crime hotline, which is 45CRIME, or 457-643, or speak to somebody that you, within the organization or even outside the organization that you want to speak to. Meanwhile, DCP Daisy made an assurance that the police are working hard to get to the bottom of the violence. What we have done as a force, we have intensified our patrol there. We are going there at odd times. Um, we are going there by night, by day, and we have a, a presence, SSU, uh, in and around the area. Now, um, crime, there's opportunity, and once there's the opportunity to commit crime, persons will commit crime. The, we are looking out for the criminals, the criminals are looking out for us. So, um, and as I've said before, we cannot have sufficient police officers to police in every community. The commissioner sent out a hard message to criminals on island, vowing to go head to head with them and not allow them to run amok, taking lives in the country. It is rather sad and unfortunate that we've lost so many lives through violence. One death is too many, Phallus 41. While some may make negative statements, it must be remembered that everyone is the loved one of someone, and there is no justification for killing another unlawfully. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force will not allow a handful of incorrigible rogues to risk the lives of our people and spoil the good name of our sweet St. Lucia. We will not surrender. We will not retreat. We will take the fight to those rogues and would-be criminals using every bit of resources available to us. We have talked the talk. It is now time to walk the walk.
Police said whilst they cannot confirm whether there is a link between the spate of violence in Leslie Land, they are not ruling it out as a strong possibility. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. Castries Mayor Peter St. Francis says he's not surprised that the Castries Basin has been regarded as a developing epicenter for the dengue outbreak. He says with three deaths confirmed and another being investigated, residents need to not only take heed but also take action to eradicate the city's growing mosquito population. Shaka Wooding reports. Although cases have been identified throughout the island, the Ministry of Health reports that most of the confirmed cases of dengue fever are concentrated in the northern region, in areas such as Castries, Groselay, and central Babono. Since the dengue fever outbreak was declared in August 2020, 34% of all recorded cases have been in the Castries Basin, marking Castries as the island's epicenter for the dengue outbreak. Mayor of Castries, Peter St. Francis, says this has been a foreseeable development, as in his opinion, city residents create an environment conducive for the growth of mosquito populations. I was going to the Minister of Health, and you know what, a lot of people, everything is politics. And she rightly said that a lot of us will not see the next election. If the dengue situation, I mean, I mean, it's really, 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 I don't know how to describe it. And Castries in particular, I believe that would have been the epic center of, of, of dengue. I mean, up to yesterday, while all the water, water, the guy just passing and just throwing things, just throwing and just walking and so on. So we, we have to be serious about that. And I am very sorry that it is not causing death. The mayor says residents of urban areas should take note that residents of rural areas whose practices are often regarded as backward or outdated appear to be mitigating the dengue outbreak fairly well. This he attributed to better trash management in rural communities. If you realize, you see, the north has a lot. Look at the other areas. Look at the smaller communities. Look at the, the, the people where we believe that they are backward. They are poor. You don't get that because they, they, they have a system. They, in other words, rubbish is very important to them. They'll put it down. If you go to Moshi, right, you don't see rubbish by the road and this thing. People know there's a day for rubbish. They will put it in the day, the morning. They will not even put it in the night. They put it in the morning. Castries, they'll put it three days before. And then you have all the dogs. You have every, you, you don't have the problem we have to keep castries clean. Francis is adding his voice to calls for citizens to eradicate breeding sites in and around their homes, particularly residents of inner city CDC apartments. Jacques Wedding, Hot 7 News. This is the Hot 7 TV 90 News. Stay with us. There's much more after the break.